Yo, yo, back again. And we are continuing with the original trilogy, the fifth entry in the nine part Skywalker saga. Nine part. If you, you know, if you if you call this a Skywalker saga. Yeah. But the original trilogy, anyway. The second film, The Empire Strikes Back, George Lucas has stepped down from directing. He still had, like, the overall story was his idea, but he gave creative, I don't know if he gave creative control to other people, but Invin. this was directed by Irvin Kirshner. Yeah, who it literally just looks like an N. He has directed the James Bond Never Say Never Again, which was like a non-canon kind of James Bond film. And Robocop 2. So, you know, the greatest story of all time. And uh, the screenplay, no longer by George Lucas, we got Lee Brackett and Lawrence Kasdan, who Lawrence was r- co-writer of this, oh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, <laughs> uh, Return of the Jedi, Force Awakens and Solo, so, you know, big Star Wars pioneer, I guess you could call him. And... Empire Strikes Back is my favourite Star Wars movie, and I think it is for a lot of people. I think it just easily is the best one. And as close to perfect as I think movies can really get. Like, I don't have yeah. any problems with this at all. I think it helps as well that... Well, incest. <laughs> oh, the incest between Luke and Leia, which, you know... Kind of hot. Looking back, I mean, they just kissed one time. Yeah, that's but not the point. It's still it's, incest. It's, fu- it's pretty funny looking. Oh, and weird. But yeah, this was released in 1980, and fortunately, I think just when you re-watch this, it holds up the most, just because the effects, again, are still great, like they were in A New Hope, and also I think this is the least edited with special editions yeah. and shit as well. So there's not a bunch of scene changes. And... Some of the shit they did change in this movie, I think, actually was beneficial. Like, at the start, when um, the movie starts on Hoth, the ice planet, where the Empire have sent these spy droids down, and Luke and Han are, like, looking around for them, and Luke's attacked by the Wampa and dragged into the cave. In the original version, you didn't actually see the Wampa. It was just some, like, it just showed Luke... It just didn't show it as much as it did. So it just works... Like, just simple <laughs> shit like that, I think, works better. As well as in the original... In the original Empire Strikes Back version, the Emperor looked like a fucking queer... Have you seen what he looked like in the yeah. original version of this? When he looks like a fucking... Donkey. Yeah. And they re-edited that, so it is Ian from the prequels and Return of the Jedi. Ian they refilmed the it, so they added him in instead. So... Yeah, I really think all the special edition changes help this movie. But yeah, this is just uh, is one of the best movies of all time. Like I think A New Hope is as well, but this is a, a step above that, I think. It's got the drama, it's got the action, it's got everything the you can want in a movie. The incest romance. But yeah, the movie begins on Hoth, where the Empire find out the Rebels have a secret base. There's a main uh, snow speeder battle at the start. That scene where like, Vader comes in, so good. Just the music, I yeah. was like, do like, like, every, Oh, that's the that thing scene. as well, because Darth Vader's... The Darth Vader music wasn't in A New Hope. It was actually introduced in this movie. The dun, 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 dun. So that's, you know, just another thing this movie brung. And... Brought. Brought. Brung, brought. Chingy wonder thing, I But yeah, the Snow Speeder battle at the start where they've got to wrap up the big walking camels and blow them up. Luke gets told by Force Ghost Kenobi to go to the Dagobah system to learn from Yoda, who, you know, we know who he is, but yeah. at this time you're like, who the fuck's Yoda? Who is this guy? Anyway, there's a really good battle to open the movie on Hoth. The rebels all escape to go to... I don't think they go to another planet, but they're just escaping to get away from the Empire. Well... Luke Skywalker is going to Dagobah to begin his Jedi training with Yoda. Exciting. Which is a forest, planet, swamp. And Yoda in this movie is just, like, he's so much better than the prequels, I reckon. Because on the prequels, he kind of just sits there and is just like, eh, nah, nah. but in this movie, he actually has so much personality to him. Like, he's yeah, cracking like, jokes. his attitude and stuff. And he's just like a, he really is just like a little muppet. Because that's what he is. Yeah. And it, it just, 
It's so cool, because at the start, Luke's like, oh, you're just, like, this little green, like, creature who's crazy. Like, you're obviously, like, like he doesn't believe that... Because Yoda doesn't originally say Yoda. He's like, oh, I can take you to Yoda. And then Luke's like, oh, yeah, okay. And then eventually he realizes he is Yoda. They begin their Jedi training, which is just some of the best shit I've ever seen. Well, at the same time, Luke... No, not Luke. Why am I saying Luke? Han, Leia, C-3PO, and R2-D2 and Chewbacca are on the run from the Empire... They're getting tracked down by Boba Fett as well, the oh bounty no. hunter. And there's just some really tense action scenes, like in the asteroid field, where, yeah. you know, they're like, c 3 Pro's telling them the odds, and they've got to, you know, do the dodgy maneuvers and shit like that. And it, all that shit's just real good. I just love the space battles in this. They actually do hold up so well. They, though, yeah, like. I know. It's actually insane, because, like, this movie is, what, almost... It's going to be 40 years old next year. And oh, yeah, old. all the um, effects hold up so well. Just everything about it. And so Luke's doing his Jedi training with Yoda. And there's just some of the best lines ever. Like, do it or do not. There is no try. And just like, just Yoda's teaching is just so inspirational. And it's just... It's just so different, I think, from, like, when you watch the prequels, just the whole, like, how you'd imagine it would be, I reckon. I don't know. I don't really know how to describe it. But, yeah, you know, just some of the best lines. It's like, judge me by my size, do you? When Luke doesn't believe in himself being able to do all this force shit. It's not about the size. The size does It's about matter. how you use it. And Luke goes into this cave where he fights Darth Vader and his own face is in Darth Vader's helmet. That's, I love that scene, eh? Yeah. And, 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 at the same time, Han and shit, they, they go to Cloud City where we meet Lando, Lando. for the first time, the biggest Played by Charles player. Gambino. Played, yeah. In later installment, or earlier installment, an earlier installment released after this movie. But, yeah, we go to Cloud City, but it turns out the Empire have already arrived before they have, and oh, really? Landis had to make a deal with Darth Vader to, you know, keep himself alive. So he gives up Han and everybody, and they set a trap with them as bait for Luke to come in. Han Solo it gets frozen in carbonite because they had to test it before they can test it on Luke Skywalker. I love you. I know. Yeah. And his body's given away to Boba Charity. Fett to take to... Oh, because how we said in A New Hope, Job of the Heart, if, Luke, if Han Solo didn't pay him back, then Job of the Heart was going to be after him. So, yeah. That, that's pretty much what Boba Fett's doing. Continuity. So, gets Han Solo's body and ships it away in the cargo hold. And then Luke Skywalker kind of gets a vision that they're in trouble, goes after them, and has, uh, just the fight with Vader has just got to be, like, the most iconic shit of all time. Yeah. Like, again, like, the lightsaber battle is nothing like it is in the original trilogy, uh, original, whatever, Prequels. what I'm saying. Prequels. But, I think it makes sense because, um, like, Luke is still just training and it almost does seem like Darth Vader is really just toying with him yeah. because he doesn't really care about the lights of the battle he wants to turn Luke, Luke to, to the, dark, the side. dark side so it does still make sense and just you know just so good and we get the biggest maybe the biggest twist in movie history that Darth Vader is Luke's father like I, I can at that time that was just everyone was blown away but the thing is like it's so weird because I've watched this movie probably a million times since I was like three. Yeah. That it's never really been like a twist to me. It's just always been, been that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't really, you know, feel the weight of it as much. But it's still just, you know, insane. And, yeah, just maybe the biggest twist ever in movie history. Luke falls down a hole, his hand's cut off, and that kind of just... Um, Leia and everybody, Lando turns on the Empire to help them escape. They grab Luke and the movie ends on a cliffhanger where they're going to have to... The Empire, I guess, is still after them and they're going to have to go after Lando. No, not Lando. <laughs> what am I yeah, saying? Yeah, Lando. Lando's with them. Go after Han Solo, who's been captured by Jabba the Hutt. So, yeah, Empire Strikes Back, man. 
at the time, it received mixed reviews from critics. Which is insane. Which I don't really know why. Maybe because it's a bit, I guess, darker in tone than the original. Jesus like, Christ, that profit. There's some deeper themes. As this movie made... All 500. The, which, at the time, is massive. It made $538 million off a $23 million budget. But that's still $200 million less than the first one. I guess the first one was like the f- was the first one and was like massive at the yeah. time, but uh, yeah, this wasn't as big, but still highest grossing film of nineteen eighty. So yeah, uh, obviously big, 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 and yeah, favorite Star Wars movie, just p- perfect film I think in general. Uh, yeah, I think one of the most perfect films. So of all time. great! It's just so. The entertainment, the drama, the emotions, the unsaid. It just, gives you everything you need. gives you everything you could possibly want. Especially the incest. Yeah, I mean, personally, that's my favourite scene. Yo, what is the quote? No, I've heard it. I can't remember <laughs> the rest of it. But yeah, I am your father. Just some of those iconic lines in cinema. Just And, I mean, most Star Wars movies just have iconic lines, but... This. These weren't. These ones weren't memes. These were actually just. I mean, they probably memes. are memes, but now not as, well. as memey as. But they're not memes for terrible. They're kind of just memes and whatever the opposite way could be. But yeah, Emperor Strikes Back. One of my favorite movies Emperor. of all time. The Emperor. I mean, Emperor. the Emperor controls the Empire. Yeah, I mean, we, we get the same. Get the same in one scene, which. You're probably thinking before this movie that Darth Vader is like the main villain, but then you find out that the Emperor's actually like the boss of it all. Yeah. And yeah, so it really it's not like one of those cliffhangers where you're like, oh, that's kind of just a shitty ending. It leaves you with like so much you still want to see in the last movie. Yeah. Like you want to find out who the <coughs> Emperor is. You want to find out more about Darth, Darth Vader, Vader because he's Luke's and, yeah. father, and that just like fills in all the backstory Obi Wan was telling him about. You know how he. Like was Obi Wan's best friend, and they fought together, and with, he was his. You turn her against me. You will not take her from me. But <laughs> again, like I just can't even believe that Anakin from the prequels is Darth Vader. But who cares, really? Um, Empire Strikes Back, great, and yeah, yeah. We'll be moving on to Return of the Jedi. Yeah. So stay tuned. This is my R two. This is my R two D two impression. Catch you on the flip side of the half-finished Death Star. I've been Tim Cahill. I've been Incestuous Romance. And that's us. Boop. Bye.